Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctish channel. Thousands of planes fly in the air every single day. But there's a lot that goes into a takeoff before the flight even happens. One of the first things airmen must always consider is the loading of the aircraft. The C-5M Super Galaxy is considered one of the largest aircraft in the world. It can transport a load of over 281,000 pounds, resulting in a long loading process for airmen, like those at the Dover Air Force Base. To make things easier for crews, the aircraft was designed to let both the nose and the aft doors of the plane open. This allows for the ground crews to load and offload cargo from both ends at the same time. So special about the uh, C5 is just generally how big it is. We're about twice the size of a C17, so we can generally take a lot more cargo. The design of the plane allows it to hold things that most normal planes wouldn't usually be able to hold. Most planes need palletized cargo, whereas we can fit larger cargo such as helicopters, tanks, and satellites. The aircraft was designed to be able to carry a fully equipped combat-ready military unit anywhere in the world. But not only was the plane created to do this mission quickly, but according to the Air Force, it was also made to provide supplies required to help sustain the fighting force. But with an aircraft designed to carry such a heavy payload, C-5 designer Lockheed Martin had to come up with a way for the aircraft to carry the cargo. First delivered in June of 1970, the C-5 series of aircraft was designed to have five sets of landing gear with a total of 28 wheels. Its landing gear is a six-wheeled landing gear system, with two wheels up front and four in the back. It can swivel while deployed, and when not in use, the landing gear uses what many airmen call a swing to occupy minimal space in the stored position. The landing gear is the main part of what makes the C-5 valuable in various missions due to its flexibility and its key role in allowing the aircraft to carry heavy payloads. Because of these factors, according to Lockheed Martin, the C-5 has been a critical instrument in national policy since the aircraft's inception. With such important landing gear on the plane, it is just as imperative for personnel to check the landing gear before takeoff. These checks often involve assessing specifics, such as alignment, wear, corrosion, and bent parts or gears. Additionally, inspections such as a swing test are performed during repairs or scheduled maintenance. This involves retracting the landing gear and ensuring that the aircraft is properly supported before it takes off. However, maintenance is no easy feat. 
Members of the 167th Airlift Wing's home station check need to get a nearly 300,000-pound C-17 Globemaster onto jacks before they can do maintenance on the huge aircraft. A large team of skilled maintainers works to suspend the aircraft, and once suspended, a team begins work on inspection and testing of the landing gear. Like the C-5, an important test while performing maintenance on landing gear is the swing test. This allows engineers to make sure the gears move as intended for proper landing gear usage. According to the United States Air Force, the 532nd Commodities Maintenance Squadron is the Air Force's landing gear overhaul center of excellence. The technicians must maintain, repair, overhaul, or modify landing gear as needed, making this an important position in the Air Force. The maintenance squadron disassembles the landing gear so that technicians are able to check all the parts to find the issue as soon as possible, ideally. One of the many tasks the technicians must complete is checking for cracks and structural imperfections, as well as verifying each component of the piece. Inspectors then visually and mechanically inspect each component of the landing gear allowing for decisions of whether or not to repair or condemn and replace. Throughout this process, various techniques are used to measure the components, including video measurement and roll scan techniques. Before the parts are once more assembled, the parts go through plating, grinding, and painting. Finally, the completed landing gear is shipped out all over the world. Like how the landing gear must undergo maintenance and repair to stay healthy, so does the C-17 aircraft as a whole. The C-17 Globemaster is a cargo aircraft designed to make rapid strategic delivery of troops and all types of cargo to maintain operating bases or bases in the deployment area. The aircraft is designed to be flexible, which means it is imperative to keep its parts up to date and in working condition. When things are going in and things are going out and missions are happening, the C-17 is probably doing it. Because we lift a lot of stuff. Uh, you have the C-5 that's bigger than us, but it can't go into the locations we can. But we're doing important stuff out here. The 305th Maintenance Squad determines whether or not the plane is fit for flight. A pre-flight inspection may include a visual assessment of various systems on the aircraft. But the 305th Maintenance Squad specializes in more comprehensive and detailed inspections. One of the many inspections the aircraft go through with the maintenance team is an inspection of the flight controls. The aircraft are inspected on a 120-day rotation basis. When it is the C-17's turn, it is brought in for in-depth inspections that its day-to-day -day schedule doesn't typically allow time for. but during the aircraft's daily schedule, it is used in frequent missions. Before the aircraft is allowed to take flight, it must first be loaded with cargo or troops, depending on its mission and where it is headed. According to the Air Force, the C-17 Globemaster has a maximum payload capacity of approximately 170,000 pounds, with a maximum gross takeoff weight of more than 500,000 pounds. However, it is essential for loads to be planned before each mission. 
planers inside, get it all started, and then uh, we come out, get it all ready to uh, take it to the fight uh, with the help of the ground. It goes a lot faster and a lot smoother, but we're just the, uh, I guess, uh, the weight and balance guys in the air in the airplane. We, uh, yeah, just balance everything out and make sure the plane still flies safe. With such a large holding capacity, the loading for the Globemaster is complex. Oftentimes, other ground and maintenance technicians assist with the job. Vehicles are used to get heavy equipment up a ramp on the C-17 Globemaster and into the aircraft. Once the cargo is inside, it must be tied down to ensure little movement during the flight. The C-17 Globemaster is one of only several planes in the world that can carry the M1 Abrams tank. These highly specialized weapons of war weigh more than 60 tons and boast a length of around 32 feet. The Abrams tank is definitely uh, nerve-wracking. It's, it's, it's a big vehicle, so uh, you got to have a lot of people monitoring clearances and making sure that the whole operation is being conducted safely. Uh, and marshalling it on, once you got it straight, it was actually not too hard of a task. Uh, had some good drivers out there, got it on the jet. It does, the jet definitely does shake a little bit and rocks you and scares you a little bit, but uh, it's really a pretty safe, really safe loading operation and it went really smoothly today. Here, an M1A2, the heaviest and most advanced of the Abrams series, is loaded onto the rear cargo ramp of the C-17 Globemaster. It takes careful coordination between ground crews and the tank driver to get the tank into position. The boards are put in place both to provide a point of reference for the spotters and to provide a buffer between the tank treads and the cargo bay floor. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.